All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, today, I'm happy to introduce you all to Nick Christensen from Rely Local. Uh, Rely Local is a uh, company focused on getting the message out on local businesses, helping local businesses connect with people that can help them and have a big impact on their local community. So with that, Nick, did I get that right? I think you did. I think you did. Yes. All Thank right. You. Happy welcome. to be here. All right, so tell us a little bit about your personal story. Where were you born? Where do you live? Sure. What kind of hobbies do you have? Uh, born in Racine, Wisconsin. Um, been living in southern Wisconsin most of my life. Uh, enjoying all of the great things that we have going on around here between the Milwaukee, Racine, Kenosha corridor. Um, it's been uh, really cool to be engaged with the communities around us here in this area. and. Uh, learned a lot along the way, been involved with a lot of different things from managing companies to running my own companies to working with big companies too. And so I've kind of seen a whole bunch of different things and involved, been involved with a lot of different things. But I always thought that local needed some help. I always thought that local needed a leg up. Uh, many people don't realize the flavor of our communities really is the local things that we have going on around us. When most people think of the area that they live, what do they talk about? Usually local things, nothing right. against big box or big you know, national things, but everywhere is a little different because of the local things that we have going on around us. So uh, I've always wanted to give back. I've always wanted to be part of a uh, good engagement for our community in general and communities now in general and so local was where i wanted to go and so starting rely local and being able to engage with the local businesses and groups has been a real pleasure learned a lot along the way how i can convey that information to other people and as of recently we're taking it across the country that's awesome what when did you decide it could be a business like how did you get started and what was the tip? Well, I was point working for, for another company uh, 20 years ago, plus 20 years ago, and uh, even 30 years ago, I was running my own businesses at the time. I had a marketing firm in the 80s. I had uh, a quick oil change business in the 90s. Okay. Uh, in the 2000s, I was running uh, marketing and promotional things for a big company. And I kind of had this in the back of my mind from when the internet kind of got going. I guess I'm old enough to remember that. <laughs> and uh yeah me too i wanted to do Those something of us of a certain age yeah here we go yeah <laughs> i resemble that remark um i think a lot of people have always wanted to make a difference around them always wanted to think of the local things around them so i wanted to start a website for local and originally i was going to call it uh what was i going to call it? i think it was going to be like half price wisconsin.com or something like that Okay. where local businesses could promote a super special deal for half price and then then they could get visibility and they could pay a subscription to be in this and kind of do that um so i was going to do that uh part-time i was going to do it on the side from what i was doing with my regular job okay. and then everything hit the fan in the end of the you know uh, 2008 2009 time frame 2010 and i was uh, shown the door uh, didn't expect it. I didn't know what to do at the time. I had all this time and a severance package. So I thought, hey, I'm going to I'm going to get something going. And so I kind of drifted back and forth with different ideas and different things and came to this idea of doing rely local. And so when I was able to engage you utilizing uh, a lot of different group at eh, kind of a, a group atmosphere, kind of a power of number uh, mentality. Okay. I could really engage in a price structure that now could work with any size business. Even if you were home-based, even if you were a single location, uh, even if you were just a small restaurant, whatever it might be, consultant. Uh, now today, things like e-commerce and home-based and all these different entities now. But where could they go in general in the past? Uh, the market was just not made to work with them in traditional media, but now they can or could when I started this, come into a program like we have and have a cost structure of under a dollar a day to be part of it. 
So that's a big door opening and it's a big change for many of these businesses that were kind of stuck out in the wilderness, not knowing what they could do or where they could go. And that's sure. kind of how I got started. And then from there, kind of snowballed into a lot of different things. And uh, fortunately, now we got so many different aspects, it's hard to even list them all. <laughs> well, I'm going to challenge you to list a few of them. Tell us a little <laughs> bit more about what your uh, product ladder looks like and what kind of sure, things sure. we all are into now. Our main focus is, is really working a lot through the web and social media. Uh, a lot of great business connections, cooperative opportunities. Uh, we touch into networking. Um, we have sure. a retail rewards program, sponsorship things. Uh, we even now have a fundraising side. So all of these different things are different touch points that a business or group can now engage with and utilize and be spotlighted within the community around them, utilizing all of that and starting at something under $300 a, a year to be in this program. Great. So what, what would you say your biggest learning as a business owner has been up until we're in 20, 2024? <laughs> I'm happy to say I'm still learning every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy, it's been an interesting several years, hasn't it? Uh, geez, in the 14 that's, plus years they've been doing this, I've learned a ton. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in general, I, I, I think I learn uh, the most from the businesses and groups because many of them have the frontline struggle that's different for each business category and businesses in general. And so I can take that information, um, digest it within me, and now take it to other people to help them with what they have going on and the struggles that they have. So the biggest thing that I've learned is being able to do that, uh, helping these businesses come together, helping these businesses learn different ways that can be successful for them and hopefully utilizing a no cost or low cost approach. Sure. Is there any uh, individual that jumps out the page that you would say thank you to and, you know, giving you maybe a little love tap or maybe a foot in the rear end to get you moving or get well, you through? Well, in many ways, yeah. Um, he's unfortunately not with us anymore, but his name was Chuck Harris, uh, based in the Milwaukee area. Um, knew him for a few years, unfortunately not as many as I would have liked, but he gave me a spark. Uh, he gave me a direction. He gave me, he challenged me. Um, he gave me a lot of uh, new ideas and brought a lot of great information to me. Um, I have a video on my YouTube channel if anybody wants to check it out with him. We were supposed to talk for about 15 to 20 minutes and it went to almost 50. And um, wow. it's just so much great information. So if anybody wants to check it out, it's Rely on Local uh, through YouTube. Okay. And you can look up Chuck Harris, Charles Harris. And um, it was a fantastic conversation. I think a lot of people got a lot out of it. I still get conversations and, and reach outs to a lot of people saying thank you for doing that interview with him mm -hmm. um, years ago. And uh, now people can go back and kind of see him again. And um, it was really a joy. What kind of success do your group members like do you get to watch them have? So we know everybody, I mean, the business, owning a business is not a solo journey. Like yeah. while it can be very lonely, it's not generally something we do on our own without other people. And you're in Rely Locals focused on getting groups together. So what kind of things do you see happening? Well, I, I think when businesses can come together, they're going to have bigger power, better power. Um, they can make connections, they can make alliances, they can work with each other. So I think that's been the biggest thing. Um, the networking over the years, I think we've been networking now for 12 plus years. And we bounce around to different places. We are usually doing it through lunch lunches this time. But uh, before COVID, we were doing morning mixers, evening mixers, different things like that. And so I think the, the biggest thing that I've seen is people coming together to create a connection and work together, utilize each other's skills and, and building on that. Um, that's been my biggest pleasure. I Just yesterday, we had a great lunch uh, networking event in Milwaukee, and it was amazing. People coming together. Uh, I realized when I was sitting at the table talking with everybody that everybody that was there referred somebody else to be there. 
That's cool. Which I hadn't had. I haven't had so much of that before in the past, but it was amazing to see that. Everybody that came in says, hey, I, I asked you to come. <laughs> and then they all were across the table from each other saying that continually as everybody came in. It was great. It was great. Awesome. What is the next big thing for you? If you look at the next one to three years, I know we briefly talked about it before we started, but uh, yes. what? Yes. What's the number one area? I would one say the, uh, the the movement across the country, bringing Rely Local to the nation, um, bringing uh, this program to communities across the country, giving individuals a chance to partner up with other businesses and groups in their community uh, to better their community uh, is the next thing. Um, I'm looking so forward to where we can go with that. Um, most every community in our country can be involved with something like this and and lift everybody up a little bit and maybe keep the local things going maybe keep the local businesses and the flavor of our communities going and that's what i want and so that's where i'm going sure what question do you wish i would have asked you that i didn't <laughs> that's a good one I, i'm gonna have to remember that for my interviewing i like that one a lot um yeah, you, you talked about struggles, you talked about uh, successes. Um, I, I, I think one of the things that um, I always try to convey when I'm, especially when I'm talking with people uh, or people across the country that want to do this program in their community, you know, what is your game plan to move what you're doing apart from what other people are doing? Sure. And so I think a lot of people kind of get tunnel vision on what they're doing. They get, they have their path. They think, you know, this is exactly the way. And that's okay. You got to have, you know, substance. You got to have something that you feel that you're strong with and that you can, you know, move forward with. But if you can think of the other things that are challenges out there that might be outside of where you're thinking, I think that's the biggest thing to, uh, to, to engage with and to work through. Because when you do that, now you have other aspects that can be a help to what you're originally doing. And when all of these things kind of come together, you have a better platform, you have a better program sure. to utilize and to help with. Sure. And so I think that might be, you know, something, but I love that question. That's I mean, question. you're speaking our language. We're a, a business coaching company and our focus is making sure people are looking all the way around. Right. And uh, yes. and then seeing who can help them and getting the right people on their team to help them do that. So if you had yes. one closing piece of advice to, for a business owner. What would that be? Um, not be afraid to take chances. Um, I think today's world is so caught up in being safe with things. Um, I think all of the bigger companies, when everybody thinks of the, you know, Teslas of the world and the Elon Musk's and the Amazons and you know, all these big things that started in somebody's garage, sure, took a chance. HP, you know, if, if, Apple, yes, I mean, you got, yeah, all these things, you know, Steve Jobs. I mean, all these people that started something from nothing. You gotta take a chance sometimes. Now, obviously, you don't want to be ridiculous, and you don't want to be just doing something or pounding against the wall, and you're not getting through it. But if you can think outside of where you're normally thinking a little bit, and maybe see what other people have done, and take advantage of what people have done, I, I think that's the biggest thing that we're missing sometimes. Um, our country really is very much on people taking chances. Our yeah. economy, our our power of these businesses and people that are doing great things came from somewhere. You know, somebody's right. idea, somebody you know thinking differently. And so I think that's the biggest thing right now. Right. Yeah. Our belief is this: the business is the best game in the world, and uh, U.S. irrespective of all the claptrap noise on the internet is still the best place to play it. So it does take yes. a little bit of bravery yes. into to take a chance but if you're in a rely local group and seeing uh, i think you're getting people together and getting local people together it's one of the reasons we do what we do also uh, i used to close factories so i want local businesses to be strong so you've created an organization where people can lean on each other um yeah, this, it's that. not a game to play by yourself 
Uh, one, one thing about business, it is a game, but it is definitely a team sport. So Yes, I agree completely with that. I was just talking with somebody recently, again, at one of the networking events, and he brought up a good point that we kind of discussed through the group. He says, how does somebody become the most successful that they can? And he you know, was kind of just throwing that out there a little bit. It was really kind of cool. And somebody else says, well, it's very difficult to be the best success that you can in your life by working for somebody else. Mm. And I thought that was quite interesting. That is true. That was really interesting. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, if you're CEO of some big company, ATT or whatever, you know, something big, you're going to be successful. You know, you got yeah. good things going on there. But for an individual that's just running their life and maybe trying to get something going on the side or a small business or have a small business, uh, I think that's their best success path. I think it really is, is to try to run something of your own. Great. All right. Well, thank you, Nick. Uh, yeah. Great, great conversation. And appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your atten- uh, attention and participation in the program. <laughs> no, it's been my pleasure. My pleasure. Please reach back with any needs or questions you might have. And I'd be happy to uh, help out any way I can.